Thank you, Cyprian, for inviting us to Mombasa and to this new facility that you have uh, in Shimanzi. We are quite glad to talk to Bureau of Editors as one of the leading um, companies uh, that are trying to ensure that we have a safe, uh, safe and quality products going into the market. Um, please just take us a, give us some brief about yourself and a, a bit about Bureau of Editors operations in the region and in Kenya in brief. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Juma, and uh, we are glad, of course, to, uh, to host uh, Food World Media uh, in our facility here in Mombasa. Um, the laboratory facility that we have here is uh, one of the many facilities that uh, Bureau of Veritas has uh, globally. Um, uh, Bureau of Veritas is a... Um, uh, it's a global, it's a global multinational uh, testing, inspection, uh, verification, and uh, certification company. So we currently operate in more than uh, 140 countries uh, globally. Um, that makes up nearly 1,500 uh, locations, uh, offices, uh, including. Uh, laboratories. Um, in terms of uh, staffing uh, globally, we are looking at about 80,000 um, staff uh, spread all over all over the uh, all over the globe. Um, so, this particular facility um, is actually a facility that we have developed to support the uh, the eastern part. Uh, of Africa, which is made up of uh, eight countries. Um, so we're really looking at it as a, a facility that will have uh, enhanced capability to really support the, um, the region um, in agri-food activities uh, from farm uh, to fork. Um, of course, that includes the whole aspect of um, uh, uh, food safety testing, mm. uh, soil analysis, and um, any other thing that uh, is required within that supply chain. Talking about uh, the region, uh, just give us a, a snapshot of other operations around Africa that Bureau of Editors uh, is operating uh, in this region. Yes, so. Um, Bureau of Reuters has um, essentially about uh, six business lines. Um, one of our traditional business that uh, we are well known for is uh, uh, government services, uh, where we collaborate with the various governments and support to facilitate trade across boundaries. Uh, in Kenya, obviously, we all know the PBOC program that we're currently uh, doing uh, through Kenya Bureau of Standards. Um, and we do this in many other countries, not just in Kenya. I think in um, quite a number of countries in Africa, we have this kind of uh, programs running. So that then, um, it, it's, it's what we then do to support the government. Other than that, uh, Bureau of Veritas is quite, um, uh, offers very advanced solutions, uh, engineering solutions um, in building an infrastructure, for instance, um, doing the QA, QC uh, aspect as independent uh, verifiers. Uh, so you can think about uh, the road constructions, the railways, the airport uh, facilities, the dams, um, making sure that the buildings have the right structures and uh, they, they are safe for uh, for people to to utilize them. So we have team of experts uh, in the region and even in Kenya. Uh, we have many projects we are doing in Ethiopia, uh, down in Tanzania. Then also power and utility, um, monitoring the utility of the grid lines. Uh, we all talk about the uh, the the next uh, what they call the the, the extra mile mm -hmm. in in providing uh, electricity to um, 
uh, to different citizens, different mm -hmm. countries. So we are really involved in this kind of uh, activities. Uh, then, of course, uh, the agriculture and food uh, that I guess this laboratory is supporting uh, right from the uh, soil analysis, precision agriculture, all the way to um, uh, all the fertility management, mm. uh, looking through the yields. The intention is to be able to provide solutions that um, um, are geared towards increasing uh, food, uh, food production, especially in developing countries like uh, where we are. We are not so much uh, mechanized, mm. um, but through uh, some, you know, some um, proactive management of how we use the limited resources, we are still able to achieve uh, reasonable production. And this is really what um, uh, BV uh, is doing. Uh, coupled with that, uh, with the new evolution of uh, sustainable um, sustainable production, we, we are also really um, leading in this front that everything that we do, mm. we, we have a sustainability component on it. You do not want to um, utilize the soil or produce that uh, food in an unsustainable manner because you want the next generation to be able to find systems mm. still working to, 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 um, uh, to support them. Uh, other than that, um, we are, of course, and that's the reason why we have this kind of facilities in Mombasa. We are supporting the, um, you know, the uh, the port activities. Uh, we do a lot of inspection of uh, crude products. Um, we are in minerals, mm -hmm. doing in minerals and other commodities as well. Um, looking at the preloading, all geared towards ensuring that the, the, the end client gets the quality mm. that they really require. Now let's talk about this investment and uh, this lab. When you look at uh, the location, if you look at the focus areas of the food and agri space, what is the big picture of deciding to put in more money into this lab? And what do you have here? In, in a nutshell. Okay, um, that's a good question. It comes up um, uh, all the time. Um, uh, traditionally, if you look at the tech companies, um, whether it's Rotterdam or whether it's Atwapen or uh, Mombasa Darizalem, um, there's always a tendency to have um, their initial activities next to the port because this is uh, where you have goods coming through. And the idea is to be able to inspect the quality of these products before they can be offloaded. Um, and naturally, that then becomes the, the initial point where you have uh, a laboratory set up like what we have here in Mombasa. Uh, having said that, as we continue to look into supporting the uh, more and more inland, our vision is to um, increase our presence uh, more and more inland. Um, so this then becomes uh, a more or less a multi-laboratory that supports all the activities, mm -hmm. all products that come through the port. Uh, but of course eventually is to have other satellite laboratories uh, inland. The model we try to adopt at the moment is to have what we call mobile laboratories and um, in this region, we will be focusing more and more to have uh, mobile laboratories, especially soil labs that can do testings mm -hmm. uh, within the field. And this information can be uh, electronically transmitted to a, a central mm -hmm. management platform like what we have here um, without the need to have really a big kind of uh, infrastructure like this uh, mm -hmm. somewhere in the western part of Kenya or have it in Somalia when we mm. can do it in a different way using the current technology. Now, the investment that you've done, uh, which gap does it fill? Is it like you've seen more demand for, for various tests coming through? Is it like uh, you'd want to expand the scope of analysis areas that you want to do? What would be your answer to that? 
So what we're looking for here is um, uh, traditionally, and uh, if we look at many other labs that we have uh, in the region, it's, it's been uh, more geared towards uh, basic quality or safety um, characteristics of, um, of food products. Uh, what we want to do here is to extend this a little bit. So the facility that you see here uh, will be doing much more than the basic food uh, testing. And it's for that reason that some of the equipment that you find here, um, we are looking at very high-end uh, high equipment. And this, in this direction, we intend to get more into nutritional analysis to support mm -hmm. the, the uh, labeling claims. We want to do um, identification of um, uh, different species of, of um, food products, uh, more into the uh, DNA kind of testing. Mm. Um, we all know GMO testing is not a very, uh, very well established, um, um, uh, you know, uh, testing solution in this in this region. Mm. Uh, we expect to really be a center of excellence in in, in a few uh, few years mm. to really be able to handle. Um, the GMO uh, kind of testing. So it's really, we are looking at it as um, uh, uh, a center of excellence that can generate data that will also inform uh, policy makers and that's why we also uh, hope to work more closely with, with the government, especially uh, developing nutritional data for food composite tables, mm. not just for Kenya, but also for other countries in the region. Mm -hmm. So we, we're really looking at uh, a fairly um, graduated basic uh, testing that we see mm -hmm. in most of the labs uh, mm -hmm. around. Okay. One thing is that there are lots of investors who probably are now thinking you own a factory, you have a warehouse and somebody comes to you and tells you, you know, you need to have a lab. Uh, as an outsourced, it's kind of a third party um, facility. What would you tell somebody who probably is now trying to make that decision about the need to probably work with a company like Bureau Veritas uh, to work with them to ensure that their products conform? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, um, it, it's always a common thing for uh, a number of people when they are establishing factories. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously they want a certain level of testing to monitor the, uh, the quality control process during production. I mean, they would be running probably 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that it is still um, it's still um, uh, important to really define exactly what you really need to to check. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it, we we still think as a, as an independent laboratory, we, we are then able to support. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, with the current technology, where we have different systems um, at the moment, this lab is uh, working on an advanced limb system where we are able to really um, transmit the results that we get real time. So mm -hmm. the client on the other end is able to monitor and see what results are coming out of your products. Mm -hmm. And although the lab is in, uh, in Mombasa, uh, and this is what we tell a number of our clients, we have very um, uh, efficient arrangements to get samples from Nairobi or wherever they are, they come by air. And in most cases, uh, we were still able to manage a turnaround time of as little as eight hours mm -hmm. in, in some cases. So I, I do not think that it would be uh, necessary to for other manufacturing uh, companies. It's not their core business. Mm -hmm. They would want to do it, but I don't think they would want to do it as good as we would do it. We do this. Um, uh, internationally and this is what we've done since 1828 so we do it much better than them mm. it's just good that uh, we can we can handle this mm. uh, this for them um, the other thing we are currently doing um, still to kind of uh, transfer this kind of expertise near to the client um, we have um, uh, another solution we have now developed, what we call Reshape Your Laboratory. Mm. Reshape Your Laboratory 
um, is, is a solution that we are applying to, I mean, we're giving to manufacturers mm. uh, who do not want to have extra staff, mm. extra cost of consumables to manage their in-house labs. So we actually come and manage that for you. We have experts and we manage it for you mm. as a, a BV uh, laboratory. So you still um, get the same kind of experience and quality work that you'd otherwise get in an advanced lab like this. Mm. Now let's talk about the future as we go towards the end. Um, what would you say could be some of your critical points, maybe investment areas? Is it in equipment? Is it people? Is it systems? probably in the next five to ten years. And if you also look at that, what are the kind of trends that you see shaping up in this region, in these labs testing environment? Okay, I think um, in terms of the future, um, uh, given that um, agriculture is still a cornerstone of our uh, GDP, uh, not just for Eastern Africa, I think the rest of Africa uh, are seeing this. So there is still a uh, need and opportunity for uh, testing uh, laboratories to, to support this, this sector. Um, obviously, the major uh, focus has been uh, food safety and it's mainly driven by the requirements in, in Europe. But locally, um, I, I still think that there is an opportunity for even uh, the different countries to perfect their system. So, mm. Because the food that you eat locally it should not be different from the food that you export into, into Europe. Mm. And if you take Kenya, for example, and you look at the horticultural products, mm. out of our production, only 5% is exported. And the 95% is consumed locally. Uh, is it safe? Uh, is it nutritious? Mm. So. If you're asking me what I see in five years, this is what I'm talking about. Mm. We still have 95% that will need to be supported by this kind of facility. Mm. In terms of uh, clearly maybe what are you going, what do you want to invest in? People? New technologies? Yes, that's a good, good question. Uh, I, mean, would, I would... What kind of new capabilities, maybe testing areas that you'd want to look at? Yeah, I, I think that um, the people is obviously um, one critical area because as we invest in high-end uh, equipment, um, traditionally uh, these are not equipment that um, we have expertise to, um, uh, to run. And what we then do is to try and also upgrade the, uh, the skills of our people. So we need to invest in uh, very good people and this is what we are currently doing. Uh, very good people that are able to handle uh, this high-end equipment. Um, the data that we generate, uh, we think that um, the policymakers should use them as they are to make decisions. Mm -hmm. That requires really good skills and people to, to do it. So it's both the equipment we are investing in, mm -hmm. But as, as, as much as we invest in equipment, we also are uh, investing in the people. And are you foreseeing probably in a future. few years, uh, you know, there's still ground here to add more capacity in your lab? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, for sure. Uh, we deliberately uh, established this lab, uh, not just at the time we were putting it, yes. But we had already seen the possibility for uh, for expansion. So what what we are seeing is probably just a quarter of the space that we have. Mm. Um, so the expansion process will continue, and of course the whole of this building up to the uh, far end, mm. uh, whatever you've been able to see, all this will be laboratories. Remember that this establishment here is not just for Kenya, but this is an establishment that is going to support the whole region. I talked about eight countries. Mm. Ethiopia, we have food samples that uh, come in from Uganda, mm. all the way down to Mozambique, DR Congo. Um, so it's really, um, it's really our vision to expand it and use the mm. extra space. So we are quite happy uh, with the space that we have mm. and um, the possibility to, to expand it. 
we've talked about this 95%, which is local, so from our tomatoes to our onions, uh, butternuts, uh, local produce that probably doesn't go through as much a rigorous process as a 5%. That opportunity of this 95% and also for the kind of investment that you are doing, because I can imagine if the 95% was being tested every day, then the opportunity even in a lab like this would be much bigger. But I would want to give you just maybe a few minutes just to make your final comments. Yes, so I, I think the uh, one of the issues has been, um, uh, which has been a bottleneck for most people who like to test, even the food that they test has been the, uh, the cost of testing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if you use traditional equipment, uh, there are quite uh, rudimentary, obviously the cost of doing it and the time you take to do it, it's, it's much higher. And you wouldn't be able to um, uh, do this in a, in a cheaper manner. Yeah. Uh, we are changing that narrative. And uh, as you move across, you find some of the equipment that we have are actually uh, highly automated, which means yeah. that the throughput is much, much, much faster. Yeah. And in that sense, we are then able to have a much lower price because of yeah. economies of scales. And this yeah. is what we are. Now, with this kind of approach and investment um, uh, thinking, uh, we see that the cost of testings are going to go down much lower. And this is what we are actually aiming to achieve. Mm -hmm. And uh, for sure, this should enable us then start to caption and manage the 95% that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Okay. So, Cyprian, okay. thank you for the interview. You like it that short? But uh, there's a lot in that interview that uh, our readers would be very glad to hear. Thank you very much, uh, Juma. It was nice uh, hosting you.